So you're probably wondering how to sharpen and increase your discernment. Let me just share with y'all that discernment for the believer, the follower of Christ, discernment is not optional, it is required. We all need discernment. And the reason why God gives us discernment is to protect us, to provide for us, and to prepare us. So discernment is key. And if you actually look up what the word discernment means in the Greek, and I actually, hopefully I don't pronounce it uh, the wrong way, but it's dokimatso, okay? And all it means is to test and to prove and to just examine whether something is good or not, whether something is true or not. That's all that discernment is. So discernment is not automatic. Discernment is not overnight for the believers. There is a spiritual growth that takes place with discernment. So it takes time to grow and really increase and sharpen our discernment. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the three specific ways on how to increase your discernment. We'll break it down with scripture. And the three ways, number one is praying in the spirit. So I'm gonna be very specific with these keys. Number one is praying in the spirit. Number two is to meditate on God's word. And number three is the ability to fast that pleases God. So let's tap in. Welcome in Simply Okay fam. Thanks so much for tapping in. We're here to fully equip the body of Christ with just biblically sound teaching. A lot of word up in here. So if you guys enjoy, tap into the channel. We just dropped our new shirts, merch, child of God. God bless you. And let's tap in to the teaching. So number one is praying in the spirit. Okay. So again, we're going to be very specific when we're teaching these three keys on sharpening your discernment, increasing your spiritual discernment. Number one is praying in the spirit, not just any type of prayer anymore. Have you guys ever gotten to the point where somebody's asking you to pray and you don't know what to pray, right? But you're just like, surrender, Lord, as I decrease, you must increase. Holy Spirit, take over, fill me up, right? And you're praying and you don't know what to pray as you start. But as you continue to keep praying, you just keep praying and praying and you're praying things that is confirmation to them. You're praying the word of God. This is you surrendering. So a Prayer that's in the spirit is a surrender type of prayer. It's a prayer that is aligned with God's ways, God's will, and God's word. Here's what the Bible says about praying in the spirit in Jude one twenty. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay, Romans 8.26-27. to Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There is something inside of us, the he who is within me that is greater than he who is within this world, that allows us to pray in the spirit to pray God's ways, to pray God's will. I actually did a full video on breaking down how to pray in the Holy Spirit. So check that out on this channel. But number one, if you want to increase and sharpen your spiritual discernment, you must continue to pray in the Holy Spirit. Number two on being able to increase and sharpen your spiritual discernment is the ability to meditate on God's word day and night. Again, we're talking about specifics here. So I gotta be able to meditate on God's word day and night. Now, when I talk about meditation, people get a little bit weird, but I promise y'all, this is biblical. The question is, what are you meditating on? The false teaching, the false idols, the person that gets their beliefs from man, right? In Corinthians, it says that we should not be able to put our our, our faith in the wisdom of man, but in the power of of God. Okay. So the question is when you're meditating, what are you meditating on? The lie or the truth? When the doctor's report comes and it's something that's not good news, right? It's bad news. I'm not going to continue to meditate on that. If it's not connected to God's word, I don't receive it. I don't receive the bad report. I receive his promises. I don't need bad news. I need good news because there's enough bad news out there in the world. I need the good news that Jesus Christ lived and Jesus Christ walked this earth, but he didn't just live. He died for my sins. He didn't just die. He resurrected. He is a God that is alive. That is the good news that he is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a restorer. Okay. He's the great I am. I could keep going on and on, but again, what are you meditating on? Again, people will continue to share, oh my gosh, meditation, new age practice. It is a new age practice. So the devil will take scripture and he will twist it. Okay. Here's what the Bible says about meditation. Joshua 1, 8. This is this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. 
for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Hallelujah. Okay, so we must not just meditate because we, we can't just be meditating on anything, right? We must be able to meditate on God's word, on God's promise. It might sound good, but does it sound like God? Amen. Psalm chapter one, verse two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And right before this, in Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. And then it tells us in the next verse, but his, delo- his, his delight is in the law of the Lord, that he in his law, he meditates day and night. We got to meditate on God's word, day and night. And the word meditate, okay, I looked it up and what it means in Hebrew. It just means to moan, to utter, okay, to speak. So it's me speaking and uttering God's word, God's promises, God's truth. You're meditating on something. And the question is, is it God's word? Or is it God's promises? Or is it God, is it the enemy's voice? Is it your best friend's opinion? Is it the family member or the mentor or the influence that you look up to? What are you meditating on? Because wherever they took that belief system and you are speaking it, you're believing it, you're constantly thinking about it, you're meditating on that thing. I got to meditate on God's word and God's promises. If you want to increase your spiritual discernment, meditate on God's word day and night. Continue to speak his promises. Number three, which is our last way to sharpen and increase your spiritual discernment is fasting. And I've done a lot of videos on this channel on fasting, but not just any type of fasting. We want fasting that pleases God. That's number three. Number three on how to increase your spiritual discernment and sharpen it is fasting that pleases God. Isaiah 58, this is our verse right here for this. Verse six, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? that your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. Fasting that pleases God. We have a whole playlist on fasting. We also have our pack, our productivity accountability challenge that teaches you about fasting and being more productive and holding yourself accountable, right? Now, I want to share that on accountability. If you want to sharpen and increase your discernment, it's just like a muscle. We see that the gift of discerning of spirits is a gift, right? But if you ever want to grow anything just like a muscle, you got to exercise it. I pray you actually exercise on these things. If you're not actually doing them, praying in in the Holy Spirit. How do I pray in the Holy Spirit, RC? I just shared with you guys a few verses, how to do it, praying God's will, God's word, God's ways. We did a whole video on breaking that down so you can exercise praying in the Spirit, meditating on God's word day and night. Whose report are you believing? Whose report is coming and are you actually living it, right? Meditating on God's word. And the last thing is actual fasting. Fasting that pleases God, not just any type of fasting, but a fasting that pleases God. You want to increase your discernment and sharpen it? These are the three ways, family. I pray and I, I really want you to encourage y'all to continue to practice these things and exercise these things every single day. Praise the Lord. God bless you, fam. If you guys enjoyed this, go ahead and tap in, hit the sub. Here's the video to how to pray in the spirit. I know it will bless you. Dive deep. Thank you so much for being part of this family. We love y'all so much. If you guys are ever in Vegas, come by our shop, stop by, say what's up, get some prayer. Let's be in agreement. In the name of Jesus, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.